Hello everyone, it's Hot White Mike, back with another video, I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be looking at which order of knights is better between the Knights Templar and Hospitaller in Medieval 2 Total War. So if you're playing as one of the Catholic factions, excluding the HRE, Spain or Portugal, you will have access to either the Knights Templar or Hospitaller depending on which guild you choose. Which then begs the question, which order of knights is better and which would you rather have for your campaign? So in this video, I've done a deep dive into the differing stats between the Templars and Hospitalers, as well as the associated benefits of each guild. So a quick look at the in-game unit card will tell you that the stats between the two are almost identical, at which stage you're probably wondering what's the point in this video. So there are definitely differences between the two, admittedly small, but the best place to start is the game files. So these are the separate in-game unit cards for the Knights Templar and Knights Hospitaller. And as you can see, there's very little difference between the two. The number of soldiers, attack, charge bonus, weapon type, defense, hit points, recruitment cost, and upkeep are all identical. In fact, the only visible difference in these unit cards is the abilities at a glance, where the Knights Templar have may charge without orders and the Knights Hospitaller do not. So to find out the real differences between the two, we need to go into the game files. So what I've done is I've gone into the game files and extracted all the stats for the Knights Templar and Knights Hospitaller. And that's what we can see here. We've got the Templars on the left and Hospitallers on the right. Now I do apologise for the wall text, but the objective here is to basically note down all their stats so that we can accurately identify the differences between the two. So everything in red means there's a difference between the Knights Templar and Hospitaller. And everything that's not highlighted is identical. So... From this, we can identify exactly what is different between the two. And instead of analyzing it in this format, I've brought it down to a small table, which is a bit easier to use. So this table shows a summary of all the differences between the Templars and Hospitalers from looking at the game files in the previous slide there. And as you can see, there's very little between the two. However, the unit card suggests there's only one difference, whereas we've been able to identify four differences from the game files. The first identifiable difference is the type of mount or the horse that they use. The Templars use a mailed horse, whereas the Hospitalers use a barded horse. Now, if you were to go into the description mount file, you would find the stats for the barded horse and the mailed horse. And again, you would see that they are identical. There are no differences here at all. I did also carry out some tests looking at the speed of each of the horses, and I also didn't notice any differences. So even though they have a different name in the game files, there are no differences for gameplay purposes. The next difference is Discipline. Discipline is defined to be a unit's response to morale shocks. So for example, losing your general or having friendly units route. The Templars are said to have impetuous discipline, whereas Hospitalers have normal discipline. I find the easiest way to think about this is that there are essentially three levels of discipline. Low Discipline, Normal Discipline, and Disciplined, and then there's a fourth outlier called Impetuous. And all Impetuous means is that a unit might charge without orders. The problem with this is it doesn't tell us where Impetuous sits on the scale, and it's not obvious from the word Impetuous. So I have run a few tests to try and work this out. Um, that included, for example, putting Templars in a battle line alongside peasants that would route and timing how long it would take them to route themselves, and then I did the same thing with the Hospitalers. I then ran a second test where I would throw my general in to the battle, he would die, and then I would time how long it took the Templars to route, and did the same thing with the Hospitalers. As far as I can tell, even though the Templars are impetuous, and that means they may charge without orders, I would say their discipline is similar to normal. There were some differences in how long it took to route, but I would say it's all within a reasonable variance. So the only real difference there is that the Templars may charge without orders, but I would still consider them to be to have normal discipline otherwise. The next difference is the number of armor upgrades available to the Templars and Hospitalers. For whatever reason, the Templars only have access to the first level of armor upgrades, whereas the Hospitalers have access to the second level of armor upgrades. And this does make a difference in terms of their max defense stat. And I want to explain this one in game. So here I am in a Scottish campaign. I have Edinburgh here, which is a huge city. It has every available building upgraded to the highest level. And yes, I have used console commands to get here, but it's just for 
the purposes of this video and trying to show the differences between the Templars and Arsenal Towers. So if we look at the building browser here, you can see that the armor factory is the highest available smith building or the highest available building in this tree and this gives the highest level of armor, advanced plate. So every unit can be retrained and sometimes there are restrictions on how or what level of armor they can get but if we have this building then and we retrain our units here then they will get to their max level. So if I go into the army section I have two units of Knights Templar. One is untrained and the other is trained. So here if we go to the untrained unit we can see it's got the, the base stats. It's got attack 13, charge bonus 8, uh, defense is 16, armor 7, defense skill 5, shield 4, hit points 1. So this is untrained, completely untrained, no, no changes to the stats at all. We can see here next armor grade is partial plate. So if I go to my other unit here, this is the Knights Templar with the partial plate. So if you compare the two, the only difference is that the trained unit gets a plus one to defense. And I can prove that just by going to here. So if I go to retrain Edinburgh, I put the Knights Templar in the queue, then I pass turn. Greetings, noble sire. Fair and farewell, my lord. Okay. So now my Knights Templar are trained and we can see it just has the bronze shield here and it's only increased its defense by one. So even though I've got the armor factory which allows you to get to advanced plate, the Templars can only get to partial plate. So they only have one upgrade available for their armor and that gives you a plus one to total defense. And now I'm going to show how that's different when we go to the hospitalers. So here I am in a French campaign, and like with Edinburgh, Paris is completely upgraded, has every building upgraded to the highest level, and that is obviously three console commands, but just for the purposes of this video. So in this campaign, I've got the Hospitallers instead of the Templars, and as you can see, if we go to the untrained Knights nice Hospitaller, its stats are identical to the Knights nice Templar. The attack. Defense, armor, defense skill, shield, hit points, weapon type, everything here is the same. The difference though comes from the fact that instead of only being able to get to partial plate, the hospitalers can actually get to the next level up. So we can see here these hospitalers have the silver shield and that denotes two upgrades to their armor. So They've already got to the bronze level and now they're at the silver level. So if you go to the trained Knights Hospital here, you can see that the defense has gone up by two and that's because it has the silver shield. And I can prove that by putting the Hospitaller into training. So we go to our buildings, again we've got the armor factory here, which is the highest level of smith, so that will in theory allow us to get all our units um, trained to their specific maximum level. So what I'm going to do is throw the hospitalers in the queue there for retraining and then pass turn. Okay, so we have retrained our hospitalers with the armor factory and as we can see it's got the silver shield. So essentially what this means is that because the Knights Hospitaller can get two upgrades to their armor, whereas the Templars can only get one, it means their total defense skill can get to 18 instead of 17, which is the limit for the Templars. So this is basically the first time that we're able to see the Hospitallers can actually have better stats than the Templars, or their, max their maximum is higher than the Templars. The last difference relates to the actual guild buildings that you need to recruit the knights. So to recruit Templars, you need a Templars minor chapter house, but that building gives you no additional benefits other than being able to recruit the knights themselves. To recruit Hospitallers, you need a St. John's minor chapter house, 
And that guild does give you additional benefits. It gives you a health bonus for the settlement that the guild is in. So that starts at 5%. If you have a minor trapped house, it raises to 10%. If you have the major trapped house, and lastly, it goes up to 15% if you have the headquarters. And I'm just going to show this one in game as well. So here I am in a French campaign again. And I just want to show the benefits that the Hospitaller Guild gives you over the Templars Guild. The guild just being the building you need to be able to recruit those units. So in Paris here, if we look at the settlement details, we can see population growth is at 4% and public order is at plus 145%. Now I've got the faction leader here. He has five notches of chivalry, so he's been gathering guild points for about 20 turns or so. So if I pass turn, I should either be offered the Templars Guild or the Hospitalis Guild, given that the requirements are similar. So I'll pass turn here. And we've been offered the St. John's Minor Trapped House, which is the Hospitalis Guild. So we'll accept that. And then if we go back to the settlement details, we can see that due to the public health bonus, 5%, our population growth has gone up by 0.5% and our public order has gone up by 10%. So that's quite a significant benefit of the Hospitalis Guild or the St. John's Manor Chapter House is that it gives you a public health bonus. And if you go to the higher levels of this, so right now we've got the Minor Chapter House. But if we were to get to the major trapped house, we'd get a 10% a public health bonus. And if we got to the headquarters, we'd get a 15% public health bonus in the settlement that's built in. So when you're playing on the higher levels of difficulty, a buff to public order and population growth is actually very useful. However, when we go to the Templars Guild, or the Templars Minor Trapped House, there's no benefits at all. Other than being able to recruit the knights, there are no added benefits. So I would say that's quite a significant advantage of using the Hospitaller Knights over the Templars is that you get this public order, or sorry, this public health bonus from the from the guild. So to conclude on this video then, while there are very few differences between the Templars and Hospitallers, I think it's clear that the Hospitalers are the superior choice. From looking at the game files, we were able to identify four differences, or three differences once we'd actually worked through them, and each difference we identified was essentially an advantage to the Hospitalers. They do have access to more armor upgrades, they have better benefits from their guild, and lastly they have slightly better discipline. So I'm going to end this one here, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.